This video explains how to create a data frame with manually specified column names using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples. And in the first example, I will show you how to create a data frame from scratch with manually specified column names. So for this, we can apply the data frame function, as you can see in lines two to four of the code. And within the data frame function, we need to specify the column names that we want to use. So in this case, we want to use the column names x1, x2, and x3. And then we need to assign the values that we want to store in each of the columns to the different column names. So in this case, the first column should contain a range of values from 10 to 5. The second column should contain letters. And the third column should contain the character x. So after running lines 2 to 4 of the code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called data1. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 5 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new data frame containing six rows and the three columns x1, x2, and x3. So in this first example, I have explained how to create a new data frame with column names from scratch. However, it's also possible to convert a matrix object to a data frame with column names. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line seven of the code. So as a first step, we need to create an example matrix using the matrix function, as you can see in line seven. So after running this line of code, a new matrix object is appearing at the top right, which is called mat. And we can print this matrix to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line eight of the code. And then you can see that we have created a matrix containing three rows and five columns. However, this matrix does not contain any column names. So if we want to convert this matrix to a data frame object with column names, we simply can use the s.data.frame function. And we have to apply this function to our matrix object, which we have called mat. And then we have to store the output of the s.data.frame function in a new data object, which I'm calling data2. So after running line 10 of the code, this new data frame object is appearing at the top right. And we can print our new data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console. And now you can see that we have converted our matrix object to a data frame. And this data frame contains the column names v1, v2, v3, v4, and v5. So in this second example, I have explained how to convert a matrix object to a data frame with column names. However, it's also possible to specify the column names of this new data frame manually. And this is what I want to show you in the next example in lines 13 to 15 of the code. So in line 13, I'm first duplicating the data frame object that we have created in the second example, because I also want to keep an original version of our data frame. So after running line 13 of the code, a new data frame called data3 is appearing at the top right. And then in the next step in line 14 of the code, we can apply the call names function to our data frame to extract the column names of our data frame. And then in this case, I'm using the paste zero function to assign new column names to our data frame. So after running line 14 of the code, our data frame is updated. And you can see that by running line 15 of the code, because then our data frame is printed at the bottom in the RStudio console. And there you can see that our new data frame contains the column names call A, call B, call C, call D, and call E. It's also possible to create a new data frame with empty columns, but with columns that already have column names. And this is what I want to show you in the last example of this tutorial, starting in line 17 of the code. So in this example, I'm once again using the data.frame function as in the first example. And I'm specifying the column names that I want to use in my data frame. So in this case, I want to call my columns a, B, and C. However, since I want to create empty columns, I'm simply assigning the class of the column to our data frame columns. So my first column should be numeric, the second column should be a character, and the third column should be a factor. 
So after running lines 17 to 19 of the code, our new data frame is appearing at the top right. And we can print our empty data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 20 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new data frame which contains the columns A, B and C. However, this new data frame contains zero values. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.